What is up everyone? So uh, we've been jumping around on content quite a bit lately, but we've been moving around a lot trying to get things online. And today we're gonna do some more jumping and we're gonna be jumping on to Spoons A6. Is this a BRZ or FRS? I always mess it up. What's that is it really? Yeah, on the paper. The Scion. I see a Subaru badge over here. Spoons. Fenders aren't from this car. You just don't want to admit that you have a Subaru. Mm -hmm. oh, it's the same chassis. <laughs> Same thing. I know when I when I got my new BRZ, I had identity crisis. I was like, it's a Toyota, man. I don't own a Subaru. Right. <laughs> right. Whatever. So, as you guys know, Spoon has been in the background prepping his car whenever he get a chance. Uh, he wanted to build his first drift car. It's Spoon, so he's going over the top with it. I'm, but, I'm keeping it tame. Keeping it very simple. Simple. Right. Simplistic. Uh, simplistic. But the chassis is basically prepped for his drivetrain, which is a huge deal. He's got the whole front together. He's got it all braced up. He did the full subframe uh, modification where it actually is running an S13 steering rack in it now, which is wild. The interior is like coming together. Coming together. Look at this thing. And with the details. Yeah, that looks good. Hold on. I, I didn't Sorry, take you for an orange boy. Uh, it's getting there. So I will actually be leaving on another trip literally tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to Vegas for SEMA. It's just kind of part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I do have to film a SEMA video, so we have some content. I feel like SEMA videos always tank, but it'll be a good week. It'll be a good week. But if you guys are watching this, please go watch the next video so it doesn't tank. Because <laughs> like you put SEMA in the title, no one wants to watch because everyone films the SEMA. But if you guys want content for the week, then gotta film it at SEMA. So. Put something else in the title, maybe. Yeah, but they know. Clickbait it. Clickbait it. No SEMA, no. just don't write SEMA. Try it out. Well, this what is not hell? a SEMA video. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go to SEMA, it's just part of the process. You meet a bunch of new companies, you meet a bunch of companies you've already been working with, you see a bunch of other people of the internet. Let's make some new partnerships. Make some new partnerships, because 2024, we gotta go Even bigger. quadruple hard next year. Because MC Hammer. Big things next year. You guys might have heard. <laughs> Before I leave for this big trip, I didn't want Spoon to have to sit here and twiddle his thumbs with his car, so I figured it was a perfect time to finally get the K into his car because, well, this is the next major step, right? I plan on hijacking the vlog anyways. You're going to be gone for the next couple of weeks. Oh, and then I'm going to Japan after uh, SEMA. That for was a the month. Thing. No, not for a month. Yeah, you're gone, you're gone for a month. For, no, from like, today to the de time you come back, you'll like, be gone a month. Like three weeks. Spoon Gangsta's is month. doing a K swap in his H6, right? He has a K20, a front wheel drive engine that we'll be retrofitting into a real wheel drive format for drifting. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It's been done. We all know, but it's, it's sick. You're near, this is your, it's my thing. This is your I recipe. I know these things. We have this beautiful pile of parts, which is going to be turning this front wheel drive engine into a real wheel drive engine. So Scoop Spoon can bolt it in his FRS. Look at all this stuff. He I has, am yo. beyond grateful for the F works. So like, this this is, is come on, everyone, everyone, everyone knows, right? Nice the real drive K Daddies TF Works, also known as Toge Factory. Uh, they did the swap kit for my S14, and this is a even more new and improved swap kit for the A6. They do a swap kit for the IS300, uh, nice. E30, uh, all of the S chassis, and the uh, A6 and RZ chassis. And they're working on a bunch of other stuff. Like we got to hang out with them. And Chicago and it was dope seeing everything that they're doing. Their spot was fresh. Oh, Spoon. Nice you know, when we first, when I first like was like, oh, well, TF work swap kit. Spoon was just like, yeah, whatever. It's a swap kit. Like, you know, like swap kit companies just like bolt these things in. And then we left TF works. He goes, dude, I didn't know they were so cool. They were so smart. Like they put so much like, like the R&D in this. Yeah. And yeah. he was just like, he came, he, when we left TF works, he's like, oh my God, I'm so hyped. to have their components in my <laughs> car now. Like, Easy. Geek it. Boys know what they're doing. They're just not shiny parts that they're bolting into an engine to get it in there so they can make some money. They are making quality products. They put a lot of R&D into to make sure you get yeah. the optimal experience of the swap, right? Yeah. Because we're fitting something that doesn't belong in something else using things that they create. <laughs> <laughs> Their quality is unreal. Wild. Throughout the video, we're gonna be going through all the swap components that we need to convert this engine to real drive into his chassis. And so you guys will see that. So for now, let's start on the engine, get this thing more dressed up, go into the parts one by one, and hope you enjoy the video. All right, Spoon, before we do anything, I think we should seal it up. Yes. Top and bottom. Spoon, show it off. Look up. Ugh. First piece of the puzzle. Shout out to Soupy. Trying to get one. They were all on back order. And he hit Jimmy up and said, I got you. So this is the skunk valve cover for the K-Series. I have it on the 8.6. We really, really like it for two reasons. One, it's way shorter 
than the factory uh, valve cover. Like the factory valve cover comes up like here. Mm. And so if you have hood clearance issues, which is very common because these are tall engines, it's a great uh, solution for that. And two, it, uh, looks, so cool. it looks so freaking cool. Like it it's looks a, way more motorsports. Nice and the front wheel drive one is actually angled. And so it looks a little funny when you prop it up yeah. in, a, in a real drive format. So, Soupy, uh, thank you so much for helping us get this. Thank you, Soupy. Uh, you're the man, honestly. Anthony painted it for me. I was gonna say, you got some flakes in there. Nice metallic black. Nice work, man. All right, let's seal her up, ready? There it is. See, look how nice that looks. It's all sealed up. Looks all motorsport, fancy, fancy. It's cool because it already comes with uh, ports for p potential AN fittings here, here. and in here. You're gonna use this one? Yeah. All right, for the catch can, you guys I, know. I, I know where I'm on the catch can. I'll see that later. This is the OE valve cover. Obviously, it's a little bit ugly, but you see how much taller it is and it has the valley and stuff. If you oh, think about slant, it, yeah. think about how low the coil packs it. And that's all gone now. So you basically removed this entire top piece. Wow. Top sealed up. Let's flip it and get the bottom sealed up. Open. Now we have the bottom of the engine, which you can see it's exposed. And so this is where you're supposed to do a couple mods, which we kind of jumped a few steps here. Uh, Spoon did them in provisions. So, Already did the oil pump. So we put the Type S oil pump in it because they work better at higher RPMs, right? It's just a modification. And they're also the smallest pump, mm -hmm. right? Well, this is also a K20 Z3, which came with the bound shaft oil pumps. Which is that crazy oil pump that's yeah. like this big and it just doesn't fit with the real drive pan. So mm -hmm. that, and then we had to cut the window tray for the oil pan. Which is right here. It's about three quarters of an inch you gotta cut off. TF Works actually has their own custom oil pickup, right? You see this big billet piece in the back yep. that bolts onto the OEM oil pump in the front. Mm -hmm. This actually is their own custom piece to allow a better pickup in a different location since the OEM pickup is somewhere around here. But since the oil pan now needs to be in the front of the engine because the subframe is in the rear, the pickup is in the front, right? So we couldn't a front sunk now. So how do we get this thing to fit into a real wheel drive format, right? This is a piece that I say always turns it into a real wheel drive engine. Probably this is the one piece I wouldn't want to make. Yeah. Yeah. Mouths, everything else you can make. This, no. No. This thing is like one of those, you just gotta buy this. And the amount of R&D uh, renditions they have in this pan is ridiculous. They have about 20 sitting up on their shelf. Renditions? Yeah. Yeah. So right here is a TF Works real wheel drive K-series oil pan. And this thing obviously looks Pretty ridiculous, right? We have this giant canister in the front, which holds, I think, seven quarts of oil, which is insane. But I'll tell you what, like I would much rather have more oil than less, right? Have the piece that actually bolts the engine itself. Which is billet. Billet. Full billet aluminum. Because the tolerance right here is so tight to make it fit on the engine properly, they did it in billet to make sure it's consistent as possible. Wow, you know how much machining billet costs? I know, that's a lot of aluminum having to get. But I see them for it because you get a more consistent uh, tighter clearance product. Of course, inside they have their baffling. Right here, you see little windows to make sure around corners and you know, spear to driving, oil stays in the area of. How good those oils are. Mm -hmm. That's right. Smother that thing up in Honda bonds. You're a smearer kind of guy, huh? Nice thin coat on both sides. Not heavy. Get the nice squeeze going. Slap her down. Get the sump inside. It's a tight fit. There you go. That's good. That looks nuts. There we go. Look how crazy that thing looks. Everyone's always like, why does it look like that? But like we said before, the subframe's gotta go somewhere, right? The subframe goes right here. Clearly there's no room for a pan there. Yeah. Or else the engine would have to sit up super, super high. So all your oil is here, subframe, here. Now the oil pan is rear wheel drive. The valve cover, we'll call that rear wheel drive. Now we need the mounting points to be rear wheel drive. So let's now do the engine mounts. So factory, the engine mounts are in completely different locations, right? Because there's like one here, one here, one here, we got the trans, it's in a front wheel drive format. So obviously there's no holes on the block that were provided for rear wheel drive position engine mounts. So TF Works really had to work with what they had. And what we have on this side is, well, these two juicy bolts right here, right? It doesn't use that bottom. It doesn't use that bottom? So it's gonna use this side one here. Oh, all the way over there. Yeah. Oh, so we got one there, one here, and then we have one that goes up to bottom. the bottom. Yeah. That's crazy. 
So they use the holes that were actually that exist on there, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to use what, what, what you, you got, got, right? Because you're not going to weld engine mounts on this thing. So mm -hmm. then for the passenger side, same recipe. We just have all these random thread holes on the engine, and TF Works was able to utilize these front ones to make this work. I always think like taking a front wheel drive engine and making a real drive, making a real drive engine front wheel drive is always really freaking cool because you really have to rewrite so much of the recipe. So old school little cheat code here. So a couple of these threads haven't been used ever. So they're a little corroded and crusty from it just being like that for, you know, 15 years. So old school move, you take a good bolt, you mm -hmm. cut a slit in it like this. Can you see a slit in it? Ties into a sort of cut. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. now it gives a spot for it to not only cut an edge, but also uh, let some of the gunk kind of get in here versus jamming up the threads, right? Gotcha. So you can take it, it's almost like a tap, right? But not as harsh. So you can kind of take it and just go back and forth with it. A homemade tap. So you'll see like, if you want to get a little, maybe do it by hand, but, but you know. Keep walking it in and out and this edge will cut it and hopefully clean it too. <laughs> now it's technically rear wheel drive converted enough to get it in the car, right? We have the pump in the pan to clear the subframe and now we have the mounts to bolt to the subframe and the next part would be to attach our real drive transmission and get it in the car but before we do that i want to show off their intake because they didn't have this out yet when i did my real drive conversion uh, but this is their new intake it's made by tf works the intake and the rail is made by them it is the coolest looking intake i've ever seen especially for a four cylinder the carbon. Carbon. carbon that's why i went with the black runners. oh it's so good the match the styling of their fuel rail and everything like oh, just take a step back and look at this thing check it out that is the i am big jealous of this piece like Damn, look at it. and of course Every each works injectors already in what would we do 1200s on this thing? Yeah. Yeah, DW is the move. Like, but like, dude, everything from this, from like the billet runners to the throttle body adapter, how it actually is blended in. Oh, that's, that was like one of my favorite low key the, spots. It was just like how well this is blended in. Just stuff like that, and like versus this. But no, it's true, versus just this cast block on there. And then they think about stuff like our port for our brake booster, right? A nice, big, juicy vacuum spot for that. Mm -hmm. And there's vacuum lines actually on oh, the inside yeah. here. So if we need vacuum sources for our fuel pressure regulator, our map sensor, whatever we actually need. Actually have a spot for our OEM style map sensor. They put a lot of effort into this thing and it's a pricey piece, but what you get, I think it's worth every, I think it's considered more to, than worth yeah, every no, Consider it to what's on the market and what you're already paying for rear wheel drive intake manifolds. Look at this thing. A little oh. bit more, you can just take it that much further. But we're not gonna throw this one on just yet. Um, we'll put it on once it's in the car. Uh, but for now, let's get this thing off the stand. Let's get our clutch on and get our real drive transmission onto the engine. This is a good idea. Steve, you gotta be the one to pull the stand out. This is way lighter than I thought. No way, that thing is so light. Do it one more time, do it one more time, do it one more time. Yeah, yeah, ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that looks so cool. K's are sick. Honda really did their thing. It, they just improved off the of B series, and everybody knows B series is daddy. Hey, you love your B series. Oh yeah. Can't wait to put a J in your next car. No. Nah. So when it comes to adapting a real drive transmission on our K series, there's a couple different uh, transmission op options out there, uh, but. <laughs> Back up, buddy. <laughs> For our situation, we'll be using a ZF BMW box. Um, five, you could use a five-speed or a six-speed. We got spoon the six-speed transmission. They're just as strong, very similar. Just has the overdrive, which is really nice. And honestly, I hate to say it, these are almost easier to find now than the five speeds. Because everyone uses the five speeds for everything. The six speeds people don't really talk about too much until I guess this video, and now they're all really expensive. Um, <laughs> the six speeds, you could still find a junkyard, it's pretty easy. So this is a 330 E46 six speed. Gotcha. So to adapt it to the transmission, we need a plate, right? Yeah. So what this plate does is this thing will bolt to the engine and then allow us to have the correct orientation of bolt holes to then allow the trans to bolt to this, right? And Adapter. Most importantly, line up with the clutch. Most importantly, line it up with the clutch. Yes, of course. So. You guys doing? Thanks, Brian. <laughs> yeah, put Brian to work. Thank you. The funny thing is, I just went and watched 
my original video of me doing this like two years ago, which is crazy two years ago, to see if there was anything we had to do to the trans because we lost the instruction. <laughs> and I'll take responsibility for that. In the video, Brian's literally on his lunch break during this part. Two. Like, Look at him. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Either line until I watched the damn video, like the same time and everything, so. We're both in a plate on, but the only thing we do have to do is clearance the transmission for the K series starter. For the K series starter, we'll show you guys that in just a second. All right, did you shave your beard for Halloween or what's yeah, going it's on? Halloween. Hmm? Dashing. It's like, I just want to look eight years younger. I don't yeah. Know what Realize they got blue eyes. Ah, that's weird. It was the beard. Yeah, beautiful eyes. Yeah, beautiful eyes. You didn't notice that before? Oh, shit, they've been beautiful. All my boys are just <laughs> handsome, bro. Oh. We had a podcast the other day, and we all figured out. We're the youngest, and we're all mama's boys. And I just realized <laughs> you're the youngest. And you're I'm kinda, youngest. And you're kind of oh. our mama's boy. Oh yeah, I am. Exactly. Dude. We're all the youngest sibling, and oh, we're all kind of mama's boys. Sibling, yeah, yeah, that's a fact. When that's they say they crazy. call you the baby of the family, the only nah, person they that's call not me the black sheep is DJ, which makes sense. You know, he's a little bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a series starter, but you'll get the point. See how the snout sticks out? Yep. It hits the trans. Right, right there. So that's where we gotta cut it. See that? I don't know what this is for. I don't like it actually fits. It, it might be a case. There's no way. No, it's not a case. Yeah, it's hidden right there. So we're gonna cut the trans real quick. Uh, when you're cutting aluminum. Mm hmm. Talk to me. Honestly, the easiest way, see how these are all little. Yeah, uh -huh, little fins there. Yeah. Cut it in slits. Yep. Especially like on the flat parts, and you can literally just tap it and it breaks off. Tips with spoon. Wow. Quick cuts and then just. The next piece of the puzzle is the clutch itself. And of course, since it's a adapter style setup where we're adapting a different engine to a different trans with a plate, the clutch has to be made specifically for the adaptation, right? So the offset, the width, the starter ring here, it all has to comply with both constraints of the products here, right? That sounded so like... You're using mad big words. It all gotta work together. It all gotta, it, it should all gotta work together. So, uh, right here, uh, TF Works makes their very own twin disc setup for this adaptation, and I like it because when you get these like big adapter setups, uh, the flywheels get really big, the masses become really big, you end up with a lot. Right. With the twin disc, it keeps things simple, right? It keeps the mass nice and small. It makes this whole. <laughs> not supposed to do that? It's a nice piece. <laughs> this, this is fine. This is fine. Everything's great. Everything's fine. So, <laughs> let's bolt this up. <laughs> the great thing about TF Works, they supply everything, even the flywheel bolts. The, nothing's worse than when you go to install a clutch kit and you either forget your pressure plate bolts or a throw up bearing or a pilot bearing like one of the small things that usually comes with clutch kits mm -hmm. you don't think about it you're like damn it i have to wait till next week and i get my thing you know like whatever oem honda firewall bolts here a little bit of red loctite to make our life difficult in the future <sighs> This is the one thing I would have changed on my setup in my S14 was I put the twin disc in the S14 just trying to be extra and for a track car it's amazing um, you can't beat it but for a street car it's since it doesn't have a lot of rotational mass it's really hard to get the car going without having to like really like the light of the, you know, what I mean, a track car it's great because you know when it's engaged it's, it's predictable it's gonna work it, it's a good feeling but for the road I would maybe not do a twin disc 85 to 90 foot pounds of torque. All I heard was 90. I don't know why the torque reach, that it beeps. Before. Way before. Now we have our twin discs. Just like Dose that. discs, just like this, right? Dose discs. Loctite, our pressure plate bolts. If it spins, Loctite it. It's <laughs> the fuck you <laughs> Playing games, there we go. Uh, Shake it more than once, you're playing with it. Yeah, and you're watching. Watch it move. Get the fucking aim away. I like getting you guys like like bickering and like going back and forth. Little big brother energy? Yeah, or big brother, big brother energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want the smoke. I wonder, you never know. Some people just be big for nothing and can't throw them hands around. I've seen some. <laughs> not you? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, it's trip gym day. 
bird in the shop. I'm gonna That's not good, Steve. Why? He's gonna piss us off. Look at this little guy. He's gonna shit all over your car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's somehow RJ's fault. <laughs> Alright boys, now it's time to set up the transmission so we can bolt it to the engine. And the first thing everyone always forgets to order is this little pivot ball for the clutch fork in the ZF transmission. Do you see it right here? I see it. So this is what the clutch fork actually pivots on right here. In fact, we had a plastic, right? And they wrap, they wear out, they get dry rotted, and they get brittle and they break. So they sell brass ones to replace it. I didn't know about it, luckily. Yeah, luckily I had one upstairs. So <laughs> got that. So this literally just presses in right here, just like that. Nice, nice. You like that? We got the new brass bushing right there, and then it comes with its own custom throw bearing for the kit, since all this depth and everything is custom, right? So yeah. typical situation where you just. Pack the inside full of grease because it's gonna be sliding on metal its whole life. Don't have to go. You don't have to go too crazy because you don't want grease like on everything. So mm -hmm. give it a good coating. Just like an honest amount, you know. No, we have the wrong one. Dun dun dun. Damn. So we just realized that our clutch kit is actually meant for a five-speed ZF, and we went back and looked, and at the last second we did change to a, uh, a six-speed, so the work order did get a little messed up, and so we got the wrong clutch kit, but that's no problem. We'll have the new clutch kit for tomorrow. Unfortunately, I won't be here, so you have to send me pictures once it's in the car. Mm -hmm. Big sad. It'd be all right. It'd be you all guys right. are making good progress today. I, mean, I was excited to see it in there before yeah. dinner time, but. I wanted you to see it. I wanted you to be here for it. But I wanted you guys to see how quickly you can go from like front wheel drive engine on a stand to it being in a real drive car. Yeah, we were literally away from trans in the car. If I didn't mess up the order, it would have been really fast. Well, either way. That happens. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, spoon well. <laughs>
Jordy, you gotta go down. Yes, just a hair. Keep going, you can go Jordy. And there. Oh, my hand. <laughs> Why is your hand there? <laughs> because I don't want to scratch the ball over. Oh, we might get lucky. We might get lucky. It's so close to the rack. See right here? A few tweaks. Um, the mount is hitting the rack, which I just gotta notch this, and then there's a lip on the stock subframe that I gotta shave down so the mounts can sit flush. We'll get these situated first, and then I'll go back to dealing with the rear mount as soon as I know these are in the right place. Just do the same thing to the other side. Jim is wild with open fire. Yeah. You guys seen him roll in the quarters with an open flame? She's halfway in there. I still gotta take care of the rear mouth, but how much room for activities we have? <laughs> Sick. Trans mount, you do your three holes for each side. Then it comes with a plate and all the hardware to sandwich onto the tunnel. So these gotta go from the inside along with all the hardware. And boom, trans mount done. Easy. Wrench. We have a ladder, you know. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> that's technically considered a muscle up. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, oh these things are nice. These are notched to the floor. Oh, here, let's get a better shot. It's notched around the floor. This is so nice. Oh, TF works knows what they're doing. Uh -huh. I took a fish in the case swap, boys. That's so sick. It's in, Spoon. Yeah, I gotta tighten up the front motor muscle. I loosen up, but yeah. She's officially case swap. That's wild how well it fits in here. Got plenty of ground clearance. So look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh oil pan is this. super high. Yeah, this isn't the lowest part of the vehicle. <laughs> I see why some people modify a factory oil pan because you do still have a lot of room, but you can't beat the TF Works one. This thing's so baller. While we're here, we might as well put the shifter rod in. TF Works does come with a gangster shifter. I love how simplistic and minimalistic it is. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole kit. Oh, so good. Why is it so good? Another billet piece? Another billet piece. That's all the so billet. good. I'll take it. All the billet. Oh. oh, that's too good. And then the shifter's already connected to the car. Yeah, it came with a base plate. It's literally bolts right in. I'll make sure Austin gives you some nice footage of that. That's so really sick. Good. I love their branding everywhere. Everywhere. TF, TF. Show it off, boys. Don't yam these down all the way. They are locking nuts. You still want some play. Well, some just back and forth. Nice and easy. Ah, oh, she's in. Ooh, I see it from here. I see it from here. Oh, they get to see it before me? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so much room for activity. That's so good. It's That's finally cool. in. It's in. Wow, there's still a lot to do, but wow. Here, let's make it look complete real quick and just toss on the water pump in the uh, intake manifold. Oh my God. Dude, the intake with the valve cover. Oh, they match so well together. I have to still get the TF um, turbo manifold. 
I know I talked about making my own, but that was before I went down there and I talked to Mike and just hearing and talking to their fabricator and all the research and development that's gone behind that turbo manifold, I'd be dumb not to run theirs. Hmm. Like they put all the CFD work into it. That's like, if you don't know what CFD is, some F1 shit. Put a lot of R&D into it. A lot. And invested a lot of money into that manifold. So I want that turbo. And then there's so much room for activity. I'm actually, now that it's in here, I think I'm gonna cut this brace out. And because the radiator normally sits on this side. Yeah. It'll move it inward, move the intercooler all inward. Try to shift the weight. More towards the actual Center. subframe. Yeah. yeah. It looks so at home in here too. It though. does. So simplistic too. Tell me the orange don't go hard. Orange with the orange stitching. I mainly wanted this steering wheel because for those that don't know, Jimmy actually drew that. It's like one of the main reasons I wanted this steering wheel in this car. Chase Bay's handbrake. I took my time onto the seat. If you notice, the seat is pushed all the way back up against the cage. And look how far the steering column comes out. It's way more than normal. And that's just me shifting the weight and everything a little towards the rear. Comfortable handbrake. Cool. <laughs> so I'm so excited to see you actually get comfy in your own car. Yeah, like driving the E30 and the Z is one thing and it's fun and whatnot, but like I want to get dialed into this thing. Into your own build. Yeah. swap frs huge 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 thank you to tf works for everything like i wouldn't be this far or anywhere near this if it wasn't for them and like getting the chance to work with so many dope companies i'm so grateful so excited i'm ready so much room for activities <laughs> big one today got the engine in i can just keep chipping away at it push back off to the side and just should be should be ready for next season this season coming up jimmy is currently at sema and then he's going right to japan and then we're gonna be here for the next three weeks just chipping away just chipping away at getting things done fc kit a6 probably gonna get painted Shh. we'll try to keep you guys updated we'll try to make some videos and just a bunch of small wins coming just trying to wrap up the year finish off strong and just get ready for next year because next year is going to be even bigger thank you to tf works love you guys mike you guys are absolutely amazing so like comment subscribe please everyone go thank tf works go blow up their instagram show them some love and have a wonderful night